Sorry, I'm a minute late. Uh, Restream had a new update and it wasn't installing. But I think we got it. So, where do we leave off here? We had uh, this guy blocked out and we're making some pretty good progress. Uh, yeah, we start with the shoes and then down here, let's go ahead and check out. Uh, so we started putting in the laces and if we go down here and we take a look at what we're making here. Oh wait, where did he go, where did he go? Sorry, my reference is all over the place. So uh, he basically has a few loops and then uh, these, just, it kind of just goes straight across. It wasn't real shoes. In fact, I didn't make the real shoes. Um, you know what, let's do this. Let's go to file, open, and we're gonna go check out uh, so basketball, no, we can do, well, I guess we can do that. See file, open. Hey, Suman, thanks for showing up. I'm gonna, so if you haven't, if you have an ArtStation and, uh, account and you've um, signed up for a pro, I believe, you'll have access to a bunch of videos that I've done for six. And uh, it's going to be this character here, so I'm just going to load up. I guess I'll load up this one here. I'm trying to remember this one is posed or not. No. So now we go to load tool, and we'll say. So basically, uh, it's an intro to ZBrush course where you essentially just make this character and the little Walkman and the basketball and the hair and the glasses and stuff. Um, I guess I don't need this anymore, but actually, uh, let's, we'll leave that alone for now. So, uh, we've got our character here, and you can see down here, we actually have Converse shoes, and the pose too, we go over the posing and stuff like that, different posing techniques. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead, and you can see, if we go into solo mode, this is the uh, shoelaces we have. If I go down here to geometry and go down to center level one, um, this is the resulting geometry. It's not super pretty. All I did was take a, a Z-spheres, and we talked about this in the last video, where we took Z-spheres, uh, and you can crisscross them over. It's a little bit, it's not, it doesn't take you very long. It's just kind of uh, really boring to watch, so I just did it uh, after the fact. And then I converted those to uh, adaptive skin, and then I would think I went through and I actually zero meshed as well, just to simplify it. Uh, these are modeled just how we did um, the other laces, we'll go ahead and finish those up today where we just go through and just take primitives and loop it around. Uh, but the laces themselves, and you know what? Even, you're probably never going to see them go underneath and over. So you could probably just get away with doing an over and an under and then just repeating it back. There's no point in going through here and actually lacing the laces. Um, so if, and in fact, I may, go back, I may go back and do that. It just makes for a cleaner result, I think. You would basically just take this shape that goes in here and plugs in. And then I uh, just kind of move those up and repeat them and stuff like that. But actually, if we want, uh, looking at my reference, I might be able to just take these. So let's go ahead and hold down Control Shift and let's hold down Control Shift Tap. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to grab all this stuff just as a backup. It's always good to have a backup here. So go through here. And then you can see it left some polygroups behind, and these are all separate. That's okay. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, do Control Shift A, which is visibility, grow all. And I'm going to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and clone this entire Z tool, uh, sub tool off. And then uh, we'll go up here to subdivision level four. And then we'll go to delete lower. And then we'll go down here, or geometry modified topology, delete hidden. You guys know where that is. And that'll be my shoelaces I can grab later. Um, and then we'll go ahead and tap, control shift tap to bring those back. But anyway, and uh, we'll go ahead and go to the level four. So basically going through, making that geometry, going through with my trim dynamic brush and kind of squishing it down and then going through and doing just a little bit of sculpting uh, to get those shoelaces um, like so. And then on the glasses there, I think if I hit BPR, actually let's hit escape. Let's drop that S picks down and just make it render a little bit faster for preview purposes. Um, and then this was, if I alt tap that glasses here, you can go down here to display properties, BPR settings, you can see BPR transparent shading is on, um, but you need the transparent option in the render palette. So you can go ahead and turn that on and it's just under render, render properties. 
and whoa, do, 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 transparency. There, it is. just turn on this transparent button right there. Uh, and then that should work. Oh, there is a caveat. Um, well, I guess it works here. Uh, sometimes if your XPix is down too far, uh, that transparency won't work real well. Uh, but here you can see it's working all right. So you can get a little bit of transparent transparency. And there's also, I believe, in um, the draw. See, so draw here. I want to say there's something tickling in the back of my head where you can change. Oh, you know what? It's probably under the transparent settings. That would make more sense. So here underneath uh, BPR transparency, yeah, refraction, uh, R factor, and stuff like that. You can go through and change if you want to get more of a glassy type look. Uh, but anyway, just making that whole character, um, little headphones and stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, I could take these shoes from this one here. I could just take these Converse. They've been fitted a little bit more. They've been detailed up just a little bit nicer. So I could take these and put them on there. But since um, Bebop shoes are so crazy, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, you know what, I want to go ahead and reset my ZBrush scene here. So we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to save these out. Let's go to streaming. Um, and we'll call these laces. And let's go to preferences, initialize. And then we'll go to load. And then we'll grab the block out. And we'll grab the laces. And now we can just take these sub tool up and we'll just grab the, throw those laces down at the bottom here. And if you can't see them, let's go ahead and make sure those are selected. Go into solo mode here. I could be working at two drastically different scales. Uh, usually when that happens, I'll just take these laces, go down here to deformation, hit unify. Now I can actually see them and now I can scale them down. Like so, and hit W. And go ahead and move those into place-ish. Uh, we can go across X symmetry. They're not perfectly symmetrical, um, but we can, they're close enough for government work. So we can just use symmetry and the gizmo to kind of go through there and, oops. I uh, also turn on LSIM so you can scale across symmetry here. And uh, we can start with that and use that as kind of a placeholder. And of course we can go through and we can change these as well. Uh, if now when we merge these together, when we deleted those other things, we went up to highest and deleted lower. Um, so we can go ahead and delete that out of there. So what we can do is we can alt tap. The laces go to geometry and then just hit reconstruct and we'll reconstruct back down. So we have our original geometry, nice and low, and then we have our high res back. Let's see here. Uh, hey everybody, I'm doing okay. How are you guys doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, I think I'm, I may be s close enough to where I can start streaming a little bit more than I have been. I've been doing some weird, weird deep dives. Um, regarding the Houdini Gamers Pipeline, I want it to UV based on texel density on my assets. Um, Texel density tools in Houdini. Ooh, that's probably a little bit outside of my uh, Houdini range. Basically, at this point, <laughs> that's another thing that's on my list of um, whoops of um, sign in, sign in. That's on my list of things to do too. Is do a deeper dive into Houdini. Actually, I'm more interested in doing Houdini uh, and um, animation tools. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the basketball guy, he didn't take too long. It's basically, well, the whole series is, I want to say, 12 hours, but of course that's mostly just talking through it, and you, you see the thing made in real time, give or take a few boring sessions where I'll speed it up if I'm just like doing sculpting work. Um, but I would say, you know, if I was to sit down and do that, I would say 12 hours would probably be about right. Uh, what would you think of the new features coming to ZBrush from the Summit? Oh yeah, uh, they look pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely want to get on that UV painting thing, getting around uh, that 
that, uh, and also that texture thing, the, the one where you hit A up here, and you can go through and you can do your alpha stamping and your RGB, for that's, that's something I'm, the environment artists at work will be really excited about that one. They've been waiting for that one for a while. Um, I've used workarounds for most of the stuff, give or take, so um, it'll just make my workflow faster for doing certain things. Um, but yeah, and the projection thing was really cool too, where you can kind of go through and you can, um, it's kind of like matchmaker, but a little bit more controlled and a little bit more, just a more usable, it kind of offsets whatever you have uh, and the history stuff. There's a lot of really cool stuff. I can't wait to play with it. Cool. That increased my speed. Uh, that's for me, that's just getting comfortable. A lot of that came from just navigation and getting comfortable with navigation, whether you want to do right click navigation or um, or uh, uh, just regular navigation. Uh, the other thing too is like saving hotkeys. Is uh, Hotkeys is another one for like going to my brushes. So I go in here to brush and like clay brush and then standard brush and then trim and H polish. Anything you use, anything I use every couple of seconds is a hotkey in my uh, interface. Anything I use every couple of minutes is in my custom menu. Uh, and then anything I use, you know, every 15 or 20 minutes, maybe three or four times a session, I'll just put it somewhere in my interface. And uh, that usually speeds me up a little bit or throw it up here in my light box. I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to go and grab uh, one of these brushes in here, one of these hard surface kit bash brushes and go in here and grab it. I don't use those a lot enough to warrant loading them in automatically. Um, but that should help. <laughs> That's the other thing too, is like it, if I'm, if I am in the zone, I got my reference up and I'm just going through and sculpting. That's one thing. Uh, but boy, that, I don't know. I, I, I'm only here for a couple hours. So I feel like, I mean, I could certainly do that. Um, but I feel like that would, that might be not the most, I'd need some music or something to get us through, get us through that. Um, but yeah, let's, let's see. Oh, and Bertram, I, uh, I went through the discord and I saw most of the stuff I was looking at was basically, um, like a ray mesh and nano mesh functionality. Uh, I guess I can, let me think. Yeah. I, I mean, I just kind of glancing through, I didn't have any super good solutions other than, um, just a ray mesh for doing really intricate, uh, repeating, uh, loops and then maybe turning that into a brush and using that. Um, chain mail and stuff like that but uh yes i have a discord and that's another thing too is hopefully uh, let me see if i even do i have it up again i can send you guys a, a thing if i remember how to do it as you can tell i don't really i, I can't I, I don't get in there very often let's create an invite all right there you go hopefully i didn't do anything weird if I did, sorry, Bertram. <laughs> I think that should work. Uh, yeah, but it was mostly uh, just kind of going through here. And uh, yeah, this would be remesh uh, by Union if you wanted to make it watertight-ish. Um, yeah, Dr. Press was great. He's got all the answers. Um, thank goodness. So this chain, and this would just be like a... This is that's kind of interesting too. That reminds me of if you guys haven't seen it, uh, Paul Gabriel had a had an interesting one. We can just do that real quick. I'm just gonna steal Paul Gabriel's content and act like it's my own. So we can go down here. We go to initialize cute cube, and then we can hit W and we can kind of scale this down a little bit. And we got maybe some extraneous stuff on here. So we can go to my Z modeler brush BZM insert single edge of the pull down Alt. We'll get rid of those two maybe. Uh, if we hit D, that'll give us our dynamic subdivisions here. And that's of course under geometry, dynamic. Uh, and we can start kind of making a quick scale through here. So if we want to add some control loops, we can actually, we don't even need that middle one. We're going to make this as simple as possible. But when we hit D, we can try going through here and saying maybe uh, just running a crease tolerance on here and then hovering over this edge. We can maybe do a crease edge, hold down Alt and uncrease these edges. Um, if you wanted to make it even a little bit better, maybe try uh, playing around with your, I'm just going to do it in here, sorry. Crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four, or something like that. And that'll kind of like that, actually. Crease level of two, maybe. Smooth subdiv of three. And you can kind of dial in uh, a little bit of that. Um, w, hold down Control, Alt, and maybe scale these in a little bit, or maybe um, 
rotate them out a little bit. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. So hopefully this works. So we can go down here to array mesh and this is where we're kind of getting into setting this up so we can start repeating this. So whatever your chain link or whatever you're making, uh, go in here to array mesh. We'll go ahead and say array mesh. Uh, think, think, think. Let's let's try a lock position, lock size. I'm gonna go to the top here. I like to use um, Y to go into transpose mode because I can sit here and I can see this pivot right here. So if we go in here to rotation and we say, um, try some stuff, rotate in the Y amount 360 degrees. And then we take this, I believe, and we, where's my pivot at? Oh. Um, oops, and repeats. Let's go through here and set my pivot. Uh, so now we have this, and you can, of course, make your repeats as many or as little as you want, um, but I think this will work fine. So we're going to go ahead and say make mesh, and then we'll, oops, uh, if, before you do make mesh, turn off extrude, because that'll want to extrude um, through here. Uh, another thing, too, you could do before you hit make mesh is you can go ahead and say append new, and you could, um, again, let's hit Y. I'm just going to pull this up here. Lock was, oh, turn on transpose. That's that's why that that pivot wasn't working. Duh. You can make more copies, or you can go through here, and you just click these repeats. And you can see how this is going to work, and now you can say, oh, you know what? I actually need to rotate these out, so let's go to this transform stage one, and um, let's hit... Y, and I'm going to reset this. I'm just going to make it so these scales overlap. And then uh, I don't have to space them out so far, but that'll actually be in another setting I'm going to do. So we're going to go ahead and say transform stage two, delete that one. Now we can hit make mesh, no extrude, hit W. Um, I'm not, don't hit W, just snap to the side here. Brush, create or insert mesh new, and then go into stroke, curve, curve mode. And then now you should have this thing. Oh, I have multiple polygroups on this thing, so you want to make sure if, because ZBrush is going to assume you're trying to make a tripart brush. So, we're not. So we need to go tell it, hey, don't, uh, oops, lazy mouse curve, curve mode, curve functions, curve, 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 and then over here in the brush modifiers, there's a tripart, just turn that off. And then now, uh, we have this, so now you can go through here and you can do, um, now this, you could you can smash these down a little bit closer to each other. That's just going to be under your um, curve step. So we'll say maybe 0.75 and then tap to update. Or uh, that should work. So now we can go through here and we can make um, just like repeating whatever shapes. And then uh, if you want to control that a little bit more, let's go ahead and edit, hit control N. Like if you want, if you wanted to make a bracelet out of this, this is where you go maybe into a ring 3D and say make poly mesh 3D and then control shift. Go ahead and take this one and this one, oops. So uh, when you have control shift and lasso, you can get rid of entire edge rings really quickly. And I like to just do like a delete hidden auto groups, grab the group I want, delete hidden, and then we'll go to this outside here and then Z modeler. We're going to say poly group poly loop here and then tap alt, tap alt, control shift, geometry modify topology, delete hidden, stroke, frame, poly group border, and then go back to our brush. And now you can just frame that loop here. Uh, of course, you're not, oh, what's going on there? Are they inverted? Did I miss something up here? Let me think. Oh, uh, dynamics not on. <laughs> uh, of course, it, now you're going to see uh, this is the outside, so it's actually here. Uh, you can also go into depth, and you could pull that down so you can embed it like right on the middle of that. So that'll go ahead and just frame it right around there. Of course, you can change your brush size and make it whatever you want. And then now, if you hit D, now your scale will come back. Uh, and then if you, it's, it might be a little bit hard to get rid of that curve when you tap off, um, which I just did. But just in case, you can go in here to the curve and then curve functions delete. And now you've got your little bracelet thing. Uh, of course, you can use that technique to make any any shapes you want. You can even start with Z-spheres and snake it in a very specific way. Or uh, I think like what Paul did was just go into like a plain 3D here. 
make poly mesh 3D, and then uh, again just take this and make a little dragon. Oh, that's another thing too, is under stroke, you can turn intensity size. Uh, let's go thick to thinnish, and then, then you can kind of get that kind of fall off going here. Isolate that, split hidden, alt tap, dynamic. Uh, let's go through here, let's do a, let's a slight inflate. Just kind of beef those up a little bit. And then this dynamic will do like crease level, again, crease level two, smooth set of three. That'll kind of give us a little fall off there. And I haven't gotten around to watching the, all the ZBrush Summit presentations. I'll do that maybe today if I have some time. Just kind of click the room and see what everybody's up to. Um, Cool. I'm try, uh, trying to get caught up on uh, questions here. Um, cool. Uh, D, 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 D. Sorry, sorry. And if I miss anything, I apologize in advance. I'm just kind of scrolling kind of fast. Um, yeah, I hope. Um, also, the, the, the UVs stuff that they showed at um, ZBrush 2018 Summit would be cool, too. Uh, do's and don'ts will make an entire character. Um, yeah, maybe that might be something worthwhile. Um, what do I do and what don't I do? You know, and honestly, I don't even make that many characters anymore. That's kind of sad. Um, I mean, I, a lot of it, I mean, this, this goes for anything that you're going to make as far as uh, just like intrinsic design is making sure that the character you're making... I mean, it, it all goes back to design. As far as like technique and stuff, technique is technique. It's it's not rocket science. Um, that's where you start. You start with technique, and then uh, if you go too long with just technique, like I do, uh, bad bad decision. Technique only gets you so far. A lot of it goes back to design, and you can have horrible technique, or you, you'd be like a clay brush hero, where um, basically you use Dynamesh and clay brush, and you can do amazing things with just Dynamesh and clay brush, um, and have zero workflow or zero technique really um but it all goes back to design so what's your um, what's your assets messaging what you're creating um if it's messaging correctly or how, what you're messaging to your audience um how you're designing your assets far more important than how you actually create it uh now in a production pipeline that's not necessarily true of course you want to be effective with how you're creating and what you're creating but at the end of the day um you can be super effective and still make garbage work because um, your design sucks. Uh, updated version, um, how you transfer your repeated curve mesh brushes from Maya to unwrap. You said transfer attributes stuff, maybe a five minute demo at this point, how you personally do it in your personal projects. Um, yeah, that should be, uh, it's basically, it basically is transfer attributes tool and it does a pretty good job in Maya. I don't, uh, I'll, I'll maybe on Thursday I'll just hop into Maya real quick. Maybe we can do some Maya stuff on my um, my channel. I don't want to do it on this one, um, but we can check out transfer attributes. It would essentially it would just be you have like okay, oh I made a chain and it doesn't have UVs on it. So basically this would be, I would make these all separate objects and in here you could just do that really quickly with auto groups and then under well you don't even have to do that. You could just go down here to you don't need to do auto groups. You can just do split the parts. And that'll split all of these into their own subtool, and then you can make UVs for one, and then you just click one, click another one, transfer attributes, and then just do that. Do, 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 do. There might be a more elegant way, um, but yeah, as far as you know, that maintaining UVs. So if I have this object, I mean, heck, I mean, there 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 might be something. I apologize in advance. I this is something like maybe probably I should know, but. <laughs> It never comes up because I always do things after the fact. I don't really, I, I guess to my detriment, I don't really sweat UVs until the end. Um, but let's try it. Let's see what happens. So we're going to go down here. We're going to go to S divides of, mm, let's say 12. And then V divides of 12. That seems fine. Let's do S divides of 8. Okay, so we've got our uh, thing here, and we're going to say make poly mesh 3D, hit W. Let's go into the gizmo here, and we're going to do an extender, um, if I can find it. There it is. And we're just going to take this and just extend it up. And now we have a chain link. And of course, we want to make this a little bit different. Um, just hold down Control, 
Alt, and we can just drag this down, and I guess that'll be fine. And let's go ahead and do a uncrease all, and we'll say this is our chain. Now, uh, if we do want to, we can go down here, and we can say Z plugin, UV master, and we can say uh, it is symmetrical, so we can go ahead and leave that on, I suppose. Uh, we can use polygroups. Let's see what unwrap does, and we'll go ahead and check our seams, and it did a fine job. If you wanted to see those, you could go to flatten. And this is basically how it unwrapped it. If you did want more control over this, you could go in here and say, you know what, use polygroups. Um, hold down Control Shift, and we'll say hit Control W, and now I got polygroups, and it's symmetrical. So now when we unwrap with polygroups and um, flatten, uh, you're going to see it didn't do anything. Um, why didn't it do anything? Why did it get rid of my polygroups? Unwrap. There we go. So now uh, it'll do that. But honestly, I think it did a fine job. So we'll go ahead and unwrap. And since we, did we work on a clone? Yes. We're gonna say copy UVs. You don't have to work on a clone, it's just a little bit safer. And then we'll go back to our guy here. And actually, we didn't work on a clone because I was just making something new. So this thing has UVs now. How do we know it has UVs? Because we can go down here to our UV map. It has delete UV and under texture map, we can do um, new from UV check. And then that'll show us our UVs. Turn that texture off. So now that we have this, we can say uh, brush, create insert mesh new. So now let's try, uh, and this is probably an Ask ZBrush. Um, in fact, I'm sure it is. In fact, let's see. Yeah. Uh, how do I, how can I get my IMM brushes to preserve UVs and poly paint? So, you know what, just in case I royally mess this up, here's a real professional doing it. Give props to Joseph Drust. And we got our ring here. So if I drag this out, um, I want to say, God, I really don't remember what the steps are, but, um, okay, let, okay, maybe you have to have a texture loaded. So we're going to go in here, and I think this is what he did. So texture here. And here's a cool thing. So if you have a texture loaded and it's um, like a slightly, maybe not a square texture or something like that. Um, let's go ahead and load this up. Uh, you can hold down, if you go to poly paint, hold down shift and do poly paint from texture. That'll remake your plane to be the size of whatever texture you have. So if it's not perfectly square, it'll just match that um, aspect ratio. And then, uh, not aspect ratio, your, I mean, I guess maybe it is aspect ratio. Uh, and then we have our, uh, texture turned on. So now if we grab our chain here, yeah, so this maintains our UVs here. So now, now let's see, would this work? Curve mode. Yeah, it has UVs, right? Okay, so now let's try, let's go back here. And we want to do uh, something that repeats and uh, makes a chain for us, overlapping. So we're going to hold down Control. And we're going to go to the top here, hold down Shift, and then just move this up. Now, if I want to test this, uh, just really quickly without doing a raise or anything, I can hold down Control and just drag and let go, and I can keep doing this. And if it repeats, that's fairly safe to assume. This will repeat just fine. Um, so now, now this will have overlapping UVs. But that's okay. If you don't want them to have overlapping UVs, just go through the UV process again. Let's go to New from UV Check. Okay, and that's about what I expected. Just red means overlapping, and that's fine. So again, brush. Oh, we'll go and just add it to this one. So B, create insert mush, insert mesh, append. Okay, so now we have two versions of the chain here. So now we'll go back uh, to our plane here. And then now at this one, we drag this out. Yeah, it has UVs. So now you can take this, you can say uh, split mass points, and then you can export this and your UV should be just fine. Let's texture map new from UV check. Yeah, you're fine. There you go. So you can keep your UVs around in ZBrush before you export. Um, now that just means have a texture loaded uh, on your object. So if you just want to put, like say we when we were doing our um, chain here, all you would need to do that's how we did this one as well, I think. If we go in here to our subtool here, and we say append uh, just a null object like Polymesh 3D here. 
like so. Thank you, Windows Defender. Uh, let's go into, oh, we'll hit E. So we're going to go ahead and scale this down. And again, this is just a null object, so I can use this just to drag things out of my object or insert mesh brushes or things like that. Um, but if we want to play it safe and we want to maintain our UVs, we'll go through here. You know, we'll do this. Hold on to Control Shift and we'll say Control W. And I'm not going to bother hopping out and doing that working on a clone. I'll say Symmetry Polygroups, uh, Unwrap, and then I'll just do a really quick um, texture map, UV check. Huh, interesting. Eh, whatever. Um, so we're going to say texture off, or you know what, just to make sure we're doing this right, we'll go ahead and load this texture in there. And then that's the texture we're getting, and it is does have UVs. So we're going to go through here, and then with that one showing, we can go back into our brush here. And now, we can drag it on, and yeah, it maintains, looks like it maintains our UVs. Yeah, repeating, do, 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 do. so, and then now you can just do that. Um, uh, again, I have apologize. Um, oh yeah, Predrag says, uh, new to Raymesh, Paul Gabriel did a detailed stream about it about two years ago. Um, yes, yeah, any, uh, honestly, the things I watch the most, although I need to get back into it, is Ask ZBrush, just for real quick, like, hey, did I miss anything? And then uh, Joseph Drust and Paul Gabriel's streams um, usually are what I usually end up picking up. And I, you know, I need to watch um, Salmon, Salmon's, Salmon's, um, it streams more, actually. Uh, he's always got good stuff as well. Um, cool. And, uh, you know, speaking of brain cells gone, my, I'm, I'm firing on... Um, I'm, I'm running on fumes for some reason right now. Normally, I'm by this time, I'm okay. Um, but I'm having a hard time. <laughs> cool. How do you use ZBrush with Unreal Engine 4, like scale and size and exporting out to UE4? Uh, if I'm doing anything specific with UE4, I'll just model, I'll bring in like, um, and did I, when, where did I go over this? Seems like recently I went over this. Oh, you know, it's for a video I didn't release. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of it. Basically, uh, like if you want to match the scale of the UE4 um, little robot guy, uh, export him as an FBX and then import him. Z plugin. FBX importer, and when you go in here and you import, uh, if you go down here to your, where is it, geometry, size, and then your um, export options here, even even this guy here, and I think I maybe set his scale up for a marvelous designer or something, but you can see. Um, the scale size is set to a certain amount, and normally this should be hopefully around, let me see, size, yeah, it should be around two to work mostly correctly with ZBrush. Uh, and when you import any object at any scale, it'll make that around two automatically. It'll just go down here and change your scale. Uh, so when you go to export, it'll match back up to what you originally imported. So that's what I would do. And you can also position on the world axis. So set up your object that you wanna work on outside of ZBrush just to get the scale correct to what you need and then bring it in and ZBrush will make it ZBrush friendly and then export it back to be friendly with your original program. So that's what I would do. Um, cool. Uh, and again, I apologize if I missed something. Um, the uh, mid-screen pop-up menu, if you're talking about this one, you can just make your own. In fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, let's do this. Let's do YouTube playlist. Go to the. Z -d 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 -d. I even changed the title because it was a little misleading. Uh, new intro to ZBrush. ZBrush for ideation. If you go in here, this will walk you through just the. It's 50 something videos. It'll walk you through the basics of ZBrush. And then way down here, the video 48 custom interface and custom menus. That'll walk you through that. It's super easy to do. Um, and that's another thing too, as far as like we were talking about speed earlier. Um, just if you find yourself constantly like, oh, let me go down here and let me go up here and let me go down here and let me go up here. If you're always doing, if you're doing it just a couple times a session, eh, maybe you just eat that. But 
if you're doing it all the time, like mirror, mirror, and weld, or geometry modified topology, uh, close holes or weld points or something, anything where I'm just talk about it and just do it real quick, um, consider making a custom menu or throwing it up in here. I, I don't like having a super cluttered interface because I do a lot of uh, tutorials. So I'll clean this up a little bit, uh, but I, I'm, I'm hesitant to throw a bunch of stuff in here because if I, if I need to bring anybody else into ZBrush, if I change my vanilla ZBrush interface too much, uh, they'll immediately be lost. Uh, so I try to keep it a little bit more hidden. Um, tips on project all functionality. Yeah, and we uh, we might we might do this. Um, are we far enough along on this guy? It's basically, you know, if you made an envelope of this and you do subtool um, project all, so that's going to be under here. Um, project all, and honestly, I rarely, if ever, touch any of this stuff. If you're ever having project problems, I'll play with these, but usually I'll just go into my uh, BZP, Z project brush, uh, project things back. Uh, and now, of course, you don't want to have X symmetry turned on um, when you're doing that. So you're going to have to use, if you do have nice geometry and you have subdivisions, go down here to deformation, um, smart resim across the X, mask half your object out that you like, and then smart resim back over uh, if you have any projection errors. But um, I mean, honestly, speaking of, let me go back to my, and I, there's probably better resources out there, but just because I know where they are, I tend just to go back to mine. But if we do like, let me see if anything in here is worthwhile. Mesh maker versus projection strength. Um, Z remesh and project. This one right here. So if you just go to my YouTube channel and type in project or project. Um, let me see if there's a Z project. Sometimes I do good tags, sometimes not so much. Uh, Sculptors Pro and Z Project, Z Project and Z Remesh. This is a good one. So any of those will walk you through. Uh, in fact, I can I can link you to that. Oh, that's another thing too. So we were talking about scale and importing and stuff like that. If you go to Z Plugin and you go to Scale Master and click that little top icon and click this little video here, that'll take you to the ZBrush Plugin Scale Master. And Joseph Drust will walk you through exactly what's happening uh, with your scale. Cool. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm totally missing a lot of stuff here. So again, I apologize. Um, let's see. Uh, preventing two objects, arms not to fuse together when moving on top of each other. You'll have to use, and we kind of have this here. So we go into this base body. So uh, this is why I have an A pose uh, with the arms out. You can do T pose and that's nice for rigging, but not so nice for aesthetics uh, or even sculpting in relaxed musculature, which is sometimes a little bit nicer. Um, but you're right. If you go through here and we say mask lasso, you're going to be kind of hosed if you want to go in and like repose this down and then you dynamesh and it's like, oh wait, he has no arms anymore. Um, so of course what I do is I'll sculpt in an A pose and then when I'm ready, I'll go through and zero mesh this and then I'll go and do my posing later. And then that way I know that, because once I zero mesh, that geometry is geometry is going to be UV'd. I'm not going to go back through and re-dynamesh again. Now you, if you just are in sculpture, sculpturing mode and you don't want to have to deal with that, turn off dynamesh and just use, um, so we'll turn off Dynamesh here, and just use Sculptures Pro, because Sculptures Pro uh, will um, allow you to keep things uh, separately. So you can go through here. Now again, it's kind of a pain. So before moving your stuff down, I would consider maybe making a polygroup for it. And then uh, we'll go ahead and blur this out. So now, I'm just trying to do something extreme here. So now uh, you have this, Oops, don't Dynamesh. And then we can go in here and we can use Sculpt. Now, are you gonna be able to use Sculptures Pro with a hidden? Nope. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of a pain. So you know what? Uh, use my method and just sculpt in, in this method uh, and then zero mesh it and start doing your details. So you, like this is a perfectly fine block out. If you're not gonna make anything, any major changes, then this is fine. There's no point in um, going any further than this, but usually I'll take it one step further and 
try to get a little bit more uh, going on here before I go through and merge all these things together. We do need to fix this head, by the way. This is way off scale for my reference. Um, oh, that's a good point. So um, thank you, Predrag. You do have a group option in here. So if I hold down control and we say, okay, like we did, we made a poly group here. Um, now, if you have Dynamesh, you turn groups on, and let's turn blur, blur off, uh, it's going to keep it a separate object, which is fine if you want to just go through here and say control tap this, and go through here and um, control tap this. So they're still, they're all part of the same sub tool here. Sorry. But with groups on, it's going to keep these separate objects. So I don't, I don't, uh, I, I do know some artists that use, um, like do organic sculpting like this. So now I'm, I'm dynameshing and it's keeping it separate. And the other good thing about this is you don't need to worry about Sculptors Pro not working with uh, hidden objects. You can just keep Sculptors Pro off. And then you can go in here and you can, um, uh oh, brush. Let's go ahead and reset all our brushes. I lost my alpha. There it is. Oh, my Damien standard. So, um, and go through here, and now we can kind of sculpt them. We still have Dynamesh turned on. Uh, we can re-Dynamesh as needed, and uh, we're still in good shape, but they're just separate uh, groups. Now, and then when you want to fuse them together, that's when you need to worry about like, well, I'm gonna have to move these arms up because as soon as you fuse them together, um, it's gonna want to stick all those things together. So go ahead and turn groups off and re-Dynamesh. Yeah, and that's what I exactly like, the way I have the hands separate. Get everything up to us and the head separate. Now this this I might leave separate just because it's it's got a really nice line here. So if I want to do blend shapes later, um, having that dividing line is really nice. But, um, you know, getting this body together. And I actually, well, he only has a bracelet on one arm. If he had it on both arms, does he have it on both arms? Oh, he's got a chain on his other arm. Mm -hmm. I still might be able to do that. I can keep those hands separate, but. And you don't, you can keep everything separate if you want to. It's just a matter of like matching your surface normals, your vertex normals, and baking correctly. And it's not a, it's not an end of the world deal. It's just laziness deal as far as what I want to what I feel like dealing with. Um, uh, the asset unwrap and ZBrush Maya reimport in the same space. Then make the IMM brush instead of trying to unwrap that up without the fact. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, create details for hands. Do you dynamesh it with the body or do you have a different subtool? I always lose my details in my hands. I will keep it separate and detail it up and then I'll get my body to the same level of detail or even if I never quite reach it for the body, um, I'll err on the side of the dynamesh resolution for the hands, merge the hands onto the body, dynamesh, maybe smooth any transitions between the subtools, Z remesh the entire thing, project all like we were talking about earlier, and then now I have a low res mesh which is nice for posing with subdivision history, uh, and then I can get rid of my Dynamesh completely. Because again, as long as you're not going to be doing anything like this with your mesh or making any monster changes, um, zero meshing at any point is probably fine. If you're just doing like tertiary forms and deep, you know, pores. <laughs> uh, I, I. You know what? I I'll let Russ do that. He's uh he's far far more in tune than I am. Yes, I'm getting old. You can see the grays on my beard. I'm gonna trim those back, or maybe get some uh what do they call that? Um, just for men or what's that hair product? I can start. Maybe I'll go Creed from the office and just go jet black. Yeah, UV4 mannequin, and then just import that. Uh, Dodruku says, whenever you import a mesh into ZBrush, make sure the selected subtool, which will be replaced, doesn't have any subdivisions, otherwise otherwise the scale goes bonkers. I, that's good to know. Um, and if you do want a, just a real quick object to replace, this PolyMesh 3D is perfect for that. It's not, it's a, it's a primitive quote unquote, but it's not like these other primitives where you have to go through and do settings and then hit make PolyMesh 3D. It's already a PolyMesh 3D. So that's why you'll see me grab the star a lot. Um, it's just easy, easy to replace, easy to import on top of.
Um, Pre-Drag says, when working in UE4 with bigger environment pieces, you may want to scale them down inside of ZBrush using Gizmo tool, scale them down, which would be 10x, um, because of DynaMesh, once you're done, you can scale it back inside of UE4. Also good to know. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of environment work, but I could see how that could definitely come in handy. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, that's another thing too we can get into is uh, animation and functionality. Um, that would that would be something I would do outside of ZBrush, which essentially, if I wanted to test functionality in this guy, I would do a quick um, a proxy. So I would. Gosh, should we do it? No, we shouldn't do it. But we could make a quick proxy of this where you could, um, I would actually use remesh, not Z remesh, not Dynamesh, but a remesh and just put a blanket of quads over this guy. Uh, maybe do a project all and then just go through and slice it up into my uh, parent constraint sections for my skeleton and then, or make my skeleton first, bring that in and then uh, maybe slice it up based on that just to get a, you know, again, an animation proxy and then go through and test it with like mocap calisthenics and stuff like that. It's actually pretty easy to do, uh, kind of fun but not appropriate for this channel right now. Um, hair for a character, how to make Z fiber mesh low poly to use on an engine. Uh, that's just your settings. In fact, uh, this is something we've, oops, uh, come on. Google owns YouTube and their search function is interesting. Adding hair, detailed hair, Z mesh, fiber mesh hair cards is probably a good start. Just changing some settings and it'll it'll maintain your UVs as well, root to tip. Uh, how to make a bridge by making hollow as using the same subtool. Uh, you should be able to bridge. If it's a low poly, just use the bridge edge. Um, or if the, if you guys don't know about this, so we have. Uh, I'm trying to think, what would be. So if you have it in the same subtool, I think it's something we've covered before. You can go through here, and it doesn't even have to be the same, I don't think. So you can go through here and you can make, uh, let's say delete. So this is with your Z model brush, BZM, and then we'll go over here and we'll make that shape and delete. And then you can go over here and you can say bridge two holes here to here, and you can just bridge those two holes. Doesn't even matter, I mean, uh, if they're the same, um, shape it'll probably obviously be a little cleaner but if you needed a bridge to whatever things uh, that's a good way to do it um, however sometimes you have just like dynamesh meshes so this is where uh, you can still bridge things between here so let me move these just a little bit further apart so we can see so i go over here and i'll mask this so i'll mask this we'll hit Control w actually instead of hitting Control w and getting those alias let's make this a little bit cleaner and we'll go into geometry Edge loop mass border. Isolate these two. Geometry modify topology delete hidden. And then go to BC brush curve bridge. And then make sure under stroke we have a border turned on. You can turn on all these. Just your frame mesh is what's going to control that. So if you've changed those settings, um, you want to go back and turn those on. And then it'll look at these points and these points and it'll bridge just arbitrary geometry between them. So if you wanted to use that. Or, uh, and that's just one way to kind of bridge. Um, but really, when you're dealing with Dynamesh um, and it's not clean, then in that case, you might as well just use um, a cylinder. Just drag it out. Dynamesh it together. Let's move this in. There you go. Bridge two points. Oh, thanks. Last. You're too kind. Cool. Uh, what tips could I tell a beginning artist? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said at the very beginning, is like it is great to learn techniques. It's great to learn new tools. You need to know new tools in order to be marketable and get a job and stuff. Um, but don't neglect the design part and the aesthetics part and the fundamentals of uh, messaging to your audience, what you want to message and stuff. Um, that would be that would be kind of limiting. Cool. And again, uh, sorry if I missed something. Um, contract QA Twister. Can that one turn into a long-term hire? Um, yeah. So contract QA Tester. 
Yeah, I mean, I, most people from, Q, well, that's not true. I've known people who went from QA to art, but I would say the vast majority of people who, uh, in QA usually go into production, which would be, uh, when we call pro, what we call producers is different than like maybe the film industry, but <laughs> it is different. But they, they would be like project managers, essentially like scheduling and uh, that type of thing. So a lot of them, I would say maybe half and half, maybe I don't, don't call me on this. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but uh, you know, people get hired for QA and then they'll go into project management, which would be our producers, or they would go into maybe design, uh, which makes sense because, you know, if you're, when you're in QA, you're really, really in tune with games and game design and uh, functionality. And if you're able to test games, like they need to be tested, um, you probably know quite a bit about games and game design and stuff like that. So sometimes a lot of those skills translate. Um, art, I think I've known one QA person who went from QA to art, and that was a long time ago. But again, my, my sample size is small, so don't take that as, you know, gospel or anything. Uh, who taught you all this, and is there anyone better than you in ZBrush? There's a lot of people better than me in ZBrush. Uh, I would say everybody that works with Pixelogic is better than me in ZBrush. So, uh, like I said, uh, Salomon, uh, Drust, Gabri everybody and then uh there's a lot of people outside of zbrush that are better than me <laughs> for sure uh i just know what i know and honestly me uh youtube videos um uh, going through whenever a new version of zbrush is released i'll watch you know joseph dress and paul gabriel but also go to the uh, documentation that comes with zbrush if you guys don't know what that is um, just because there's some stuff that just gets left out or doesn't get um maybe brought up or explained fully so if you go into your ZBrush 2019, right at the very top, you know where you have your ZBrushes and your Z alphas and stuff stored, documentation's right here at the top. Um, and it goes way back. ZBrush 4 R2. She was 4.0, 3.5, 3.5. I wanna say I was at SOE when that was out. Um, but yeah, you can go all the way back, but also ZBrush 2018, nine, what's new, what's 2019, what's new. Uh, check those out, just scroll through them real quick. Um, I'll jot some notes down. Uh, I'm a prolific note taker, so. Cool. Uh, and again. Cool. Um, producer people take care of the game documentation, scheduling, roadmaps, milestones, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, um, peel UV. I'm not sure about. I, I I know only as much as you guys know. I, I watched their ZBrush Summit, um, and that's all I've gotten around to just yet. But um, we'll see. We'll see who it comes. What comes out? Um, so, let's say we're back here. Um, any any other low hanging fruit we need to? Get? So change we've already gone over, and just looping these chains back and forth should be fairly elementary. Um, we have some, I don't know what that is. What is this? Is that just a button? And then these look like hand grenades. We can make maybe some hand grenades today. And then the pants maybe we'll get around to on Thursday. Uh, we'll hop into Marvelous Designer real quick and make those. Uh, we can use these as our block out mesh, actually. Uh, we can take our base body in there and make, make some canvas pants. Uh, we, we have these loops here. They're a little bit big. Uh, we can modify these real quick. Let's go down to... Uh, polyframe turned on, alt tap my laces here. Oops, we don't need these ones. Although these laces actually will work just fine. Basically what I did was, uh, if you missed it, it would just be grabbing a cylinder in here. And I'll go split mass points and then um, let's see which way is this going. And then uh, we can say control shift Alt, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then maybe these two back here, maybe just, just this one, we can delete that one. And then we'll say uh, Q mesh, poly group ball. And I would Q mesh this just temporarily, just so I can see what I'm doing. I don't like dealing with double sided or single sided meshes. You can go down here to display properties and turn on uh, double, but it's just nicer to see something with a little bit of thickness. And then hit W, and you can scale these down. And then if you want to overlap these, you could just, uh, let's hold down control. I mean, you can hit W and just control drag along here and then just rotate that up into there a little bit. And if you ever want to as well, uh, I would go into maybe a group by normals and then uh, that'll give you uh, polygroups on all these sides. If you want to smooth these out at any point, just go to polish by features. And then I kind of even out um, these a little bit more. But 
Uh, oh, it gave me a polygroup across here. If you don't like that, well, this is fine. You could take both of these, I suppose, and hit Control W. There you go. So now when I do polish by features, it won't give us a little. Of course, you need to do it on the inside as well. Uh, but anyway, we have this. So now if we want to go through here, let's go ahead and go to Unmesh Mesh Center. Let's find this normal just by alt tapping on it. And then we'll rotate this around. And then we can go through here and we could say maybe do a, um, a twist deformer. Or sometimes uh, I'll use the bend curve. It just gives me a little bit more freedom. So I'm going to go in here to say which axis here. And then curve resolution, maybe maybe this many and then you can go through here and this is where you could like pose out the loops and stuff like that and then while you're posing it you can go through here and you can click on uh, twist so you can start twisting down and twisting and twisting so now you've got a little twist in our loop here and uh, that can kind of be where you're starting now you might say oh your geometry is getting a little bit mangled um, that's okay we can isolate just this top one here and you geometry modified topology delete hidden because again it's just thickness so we can go through here, we'll do a slight maybe polish by features. Um, and you can actually, we can maybe even subdivide this. Let's hit control D here, and then we'll go to geometry, delete lower, and then we'll um, insert single edge loop, hold down alt. And then now we have QMesh polygroup ball, a little more resolution. <laughs> uh, dogs are going nuts for some reason. And we're gonna do a group by normals. And then if we wanna thicken these up along this axis, just hold down shift with Q mesh or extrude and then start pulling out and then hold down shift and you can just thicken those back up. Um, so now you've got little little laces there. Um, any thoughts on Blender? Um, yeah, it's cool. That's another thing that's on my list. I've got so many lists. Uh, is there a Pixelogic streamer schedule? Yeah, ZBrush Live. Dot com. <laughs> oh, my dogs. Um, hey, I'm on ZBrush Live right now. So here I am, I am streaming. And then if you go down here, somewhere in here, yeah, here's the latest ones. And then somewhere in here, I, I swear there's a, there's a schedule somewhere on here. Uh, and you can check that out. Um. <laughs> FBX importer doesn't work anymore. Is it just for me or is it ZBrush 2019 plugin issue? It should work. Um, we can do it. I'm trying to think of where I have an FBX. Oh, you know what? I do have an XBX. So we can go in here. And again, if we want to replace something, we just grab that Polymesh 3D and then Z plugin. Uh, so do make sure you have, if it's, it is going to yell at you, uh, if you don't have, I think it's going to yell at you if you don't have something in here. So grab that Polymesh 3D FBX import. And then um, let's go in here to recording our station. Um, what am I looking for here? No character, yeah, Pablo. The other cool thing about, see how it's bringing in a bounding box that keeps it perfectly um, relative and it also maintains your poly groups that you had. Um, so here's the low res, quote unquote, and it keeps your poly paint around. Um, so, and it also keeps your subtool names. So that's why I love FBX. So here's my low res um, that I have. Yes, and, and that, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, if you want music, then definitely like load up Spotify or whatever your uh, music of choice is. Because the other thing, too, is you guys don't want to listen to music I listen to. Give me a break. Who wants to listen to my music? Uh, yeah, so yeah, just make sure you have something available to import onto. Say so delete all. This is the rush 2019.1.2. I don't know if that makes a difference, but um, so anyway, we talked a little bit about laces here and how to go through and twist them, and then of course you can subdivide these or crease, and you know you know the drill by now. So we'll go ahead and delete that out. Um, and this one we can go ahead and delete. 
So uh, these ones here, we're going to hold down Control Shift. Let's turn off all our poly paints here. Control Shift, drag, Control Shift A, and then mask and invert that. And I, um, you know what? We don't even need all that detail. We'll go to Subdivision Level 1. We'll just hit Delete Higher. We're just in the block out phase. So now I can go through here and I can scale this back. Let's go ahead and turn on the L sim for our local symmetry here. And these aren't symmetrical, but I am able to go through and uh, maybe match these a little bit better. Um, so it'd be something like this. And like like we just showed, you can go through and... Um, and this is what I do, is what, like if I don't want to deal with polygroups like, oh, there's polygroups on this side and that side, and, I'll, and I just want to grab this loop, just grab a little piece of it, Control shift a and then mask, invert, and then invert that mask. And then go into solo mode here, and then we can go here and just pull along here maybe, and just kind of get those up and in. But this is good enough, so now, we have this loop going around, and this one I'm going to drop down just a tiny bit, and then this one I'm going to drop down just a tiny bit, just to kind of match those up a little bit closer. So, and this is this is mostly just polish work at this point. We do need to have this loop on the other side. You can use uh, a ray mesh for that. Um, also, actually, this needs to be tighter. So I'm going to hit W, and I'm going to go into solo mode here. We're going to tighten this up around his ankle a little bit. And we're going to pull in here, and then we're just going to take this, go to subject level 1, and we'll kind of move this around. Let's go ahead and mask the bottom of here, and then control tap to kind of um, feather that mask. And then we'll go through here, and we'll pull these in a little bit. That'll be also nicer around his ankles here. Um, of course, if you wanted to like 3D print this or something, you, there's a lot more considerations when it comes to like undercuts and um, and or printing these things out on their own tools or sub tools. And we'll go ahead and unmask and we'll go ahead and just pop these in here. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean this has to conform perfectly. I mean, the canvas of the shoe is probably going to deform the um, the rope, but I'm just using this as a guide to kind of go through and move this stuff around. And then we can take this one and move these around. These are just simple subdivided things. So now that matches a little bit closer. And then this one, uh, you know, let's turn on the LSIM, mirror across the X axis. Okay, fine. Delete lower, mirror, mirror and weld, and then uh, reconstruct subdivisions. Go back up. Ah, so if I reconstruct too low, Sometimes it'll get a little bit, um, you can reconstruct to where it gets in a bad state. Uh, luckily, everything else in my scene, uh, there's probably a Z project saved, um, but that's okay. We can just load up the Z tool we were playing with. It's usually pretty good at that. There we go. And then um, let's go down here to our recovered Z tool. Oh, here's the here's one of the guys I'm working on. Let me see if this is a Z tool. Or is it, it's a Z project. Z project. Hmm. I won't load him up then. So geometry, go to certain level two. Don't crash. Ah. Well, we lost that string. But that string is certainly easy enough to get back. Um, let's see. Well, that's working here. Let's go ahead and close that down. Okay, so we can go here to our recovered. And just to play this one safe, let's go ahead and grab that subtool we're working on here. And we can just delete it out of our scene. Uh, but this will be good, though because what we can do is uh, we can use IMM brushes and such uh, to create this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone. I just like to, I, I could go into solo mode and duplicate it off, but sometimes I'll just hop out of my subtool and just go in here because I can be a little bit cleaner maybe. Uh, so I've cloned this off here. We do have subdivisions, so we can go ahead and put this back up if we want to. Um, but we can go through the side here. And actually, is this an array mesh? Looks like it. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and turn off array mesh. That's going to be in your array mesh. Just turn that button off. Um, and really what I'm looking for is this outside here. And then let's just go in here to delete lower geometry, modified topology, delete hidden, control shift, slice curve. And we'll just go through here 
and we'll just like slice through here and slice through here. Isolate this part here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and then we'll do a zero mesh half depth size down to zero. And just let zero mesh do the heavy lifting. And if I want to clean this up, um, it's simple enough to do Z modeler brush, um, insert single edge with pull down alt, and then we have this. And then again, if I want to see this, Q mesh, polygroup all, pop that out. And then we can go in here back to our shoe and we'll go to insert uh, that merge poly mesh. So we have this one here. Now, in order to get that towards the middle, this is where we went through here. Again, sorry about the repeat from last week, but delete single poly here to here. Although this one um, gave me a kind of a triangle over here. That's okay. We'll say Q mesh single poly. And then delete single poly. And now I can bridge these. So again, like we were talking about earlier, bridge two holes here to here. Kind of go make those go across. Now, of course, we don't have to go all the way across. Let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit. If you want this to stop, again, just like we did, you can go down here and you can say um, Q mesh single poly and just pull these back. And that'll kind of be your stopping point. Now, when I go to move this, it's going to want to move the other side. That's when you can go into auto masking here and then turn on topological. Let's turn this range down just a bit. And then we can just go through here and move this side and move that side like so. Uh, or you can use a topological brush. So BM, move topological, BMT. Yes, and those, uh, yeah, those eight laces, uh, the new laces and the converse from earlier uh, was these spheres and then just using trim dynamic. Um, no, Knowing what I know now, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can do this real quick. I'm going to steal some of that hard work. So we're going to go in here and we're going to do a load tool. Let's just load tool. We talked about it, but we didn't do it, so we might as well just do it. So these are UVs. So this is from the uh, Art Station series here. And it is, I mean, basically making this whole whole guy here, but the laces is what we're concerned about. So we're gonna go to subtool, we're gonna go to delete other. And then, uh, so we've got this. And um, so instead of, you know, again, doing the laces all the way up is fine. That works, um, but might be a little bit overkill for some of the modeling. So what we could do is this would just be a simple loop. You can make this with any number of techniques, but it's the crisscrossing parts that I want to steal. So let's see if we can't just take this top one here. Oops, that's not control shift drag. And then this top one here. And that's going to be my. So this one goes, okay, under, oh, over, and then in, over, and then in. So I think I just need one of them. You know, we'll be lazy and just take one of them. So I'll delete hidden. Uh, oops, geometry, delete lower, delete hidden. Good enough. So now we have this basic geometry. So now what I can try and do is hold down control shift and like we did before, we can go to select lasso and we can get rid of maybe this one here and maybe this, you can also use polygroups for this, but um, it seems to be working fine. And then we'll take Oh boy, so this is where it goes. Okay, this is over and under, and then this one disappears, right? And it gets replaced. If this doesn't work, uh, you'll get you'll get the idea. Here and here. Okay, so John Schmidt modified topology, delete hidden, auto groups, grab this top one here, grab this top one here. Because again, we just need thickness, so I don't need any really specific thickness. Um, and you know what, we can extend this out later. So I can go ahead and clean this up as well. So we'll go to Control Shift, Alt, Change modified topology, delete hidden. Okay, okay, pretty decent, not too shabby. Yoink. Okay, so uh, just like we did before, zero mesh half depth size down to zero. Let's get some cleaner geometry. Keep going, keep going. And it's sometimes if you isolate one of these, um, split hidden, just zero meshing one of them. Boy, it really doesn't want to. It doesn't want to get lower. Why is that? Why is it trying to freeze? Is there any freeze? No. Let's do here. 
freeze border is on. Oh, turn that off. <laughs> it felt like there was a freeze border, but I don't have freeze border in my options, so I didn't see it. Um, and you know what? This is, I'm going to call this one good enough because, again, we can go ahead and extend. We can get rid of this problematic geometry, and we can just extend that out later. And then this one here, same deal. Turn off freeze border. And I must have had a freeze border for, like, showing a demo or something. Uh, this one actually worked a little bit better. Okay, so when I have draw size of 1 and I move, it wants to move the whole thing. Um, you can make your draw size of 2 and move, um, and that worked in that case. But you can also go in here to Preferences, Draw, um, or, yeah, Draw. And then uh, the Dynamic Brush Scale, I actually need to make it smaller. You can over-crank it, but I'm going to under-crank it a little bit, say 0.25. And now we can go down to, like... Now my brush size is seven, and it's that big. Um, so, oops, there's a triangle in here. That's okay. We'll go through here and we'll say split edge. Oh, wait, there's not a triangle in there. It's just a little baby sized, really, 0.25. Let's turn off topological. There we go. So we have our two laces here. So we can go through here and we can say, uh, merge these down. Um, actually, let's do this separately. So we'll say QMesh, Polygroup All. I'm going to QMesh this up a little bit and then go to the bottom here and hold down Shift. And, or we can even simplify these a bit before we do that. Let's go in here to um, Insert Single Edge Loop, get rid of these, get rid of these. And um, sometimes you can go to your edge loop, and um, it'll delete based on angle. Um, but you can also just go through here and just grab like every other one. So this is a whole lot of work just for to make something that could have just been made with uh, primitives. Now that I'm looking at the end result, but you know what? Sometimes you got to go through the process before you have that moment. And on the back here, I just like to let's turn on double display properties, double temporarily. Oh, why is this wanting to go everywhere? Let's tap. There we go. Looks like I accidentally grabbed the... Okay, so here, 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 and here. And I'll turn off double. And then, like I said before, Q mesh polygroup all, and go to the bottom here and hold down Shift, Q mesh this down, and then Alt tap this one, Q mesh this up, and then again hold down Shift. Wait a minute. There you go. I don't know what that was all about. And then uh, now that I have this, it's easier for me to like, oh, I want to continue to extend this down. I can go through here and say Q mesh a single poly. And you can Q mesh this down and then unmask it and then rotate it around. And then, uh, or you can just take a copy of that off and move it around and whatever you need to do. Anyways, let's hit uh, Control W. Let's go ahead and merge these down. And boy, it, it took my history away. It gave me a warning about not being able to save history. I wonder if there's something weird going on. But anyway, we can hit uh, B, create insert mesh, new. And then now I can go through here. Let's turn on perspective. And I would be able to, uh, what's something with, these are all have subdivision history. We're doing a lot of sculpting. Let's go to the foot here. Okay, so uh, we can go through here and we can just take this and then depth, maybe embed it a little bit more. And then uh, maybe when you capture that, rotate it back a little bit. You can also just put it on a curve and just drag it up and it'll go stamp it. And you can, uh, but this is probably just enough. So that way you don't need to worry about going in. And this geometry actually be a lot nicer than the geometry I ended up with, which is, you know, trim geometry. And it did turn off my... Uh, history, which is not optimal. Delete hidden. Um, preferences. Where is that at? Um, memory, compact memory. Where's my undos? Undo history. 
saving. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and save this guy off. Under streaming turtle power, we didn't really make too much progress with this. We'll go ahead and save this as 05. Save incrementally. You never know when you might corrupt something. And we will go back. Come on back. Stop pulling focus there. There we go. Get a drink. <laughs> yeah, I'll add a, I'll add a, I always do as I say, not as I do. Um, like we just pointed out, uh, there's probably some opportunity for me to bring in a, um, a new button into my custom menu there, uh, internal power, and it's easy enough to do. There we go. Okay. Should be nice. And, um, oh yeah. And then, uh, also, the topology brush would have been uh, even even better for that. So again, just grabbing something that doesn't have uh, history, and then BTO, and then just really quickly, if you're just trying to get the curvature of a shape, just go through here and just make some laces like this. Uh, if you're if it ever doesn't pick up, just over crank the size of your you can see the size of the curve. This makes it a little bit easier, and then you can tap off. Undo history entries would be auto in order to preserve your system memory. Okay. And that's fine, I don't mind that. Let's do split mass points. If it doesn't turn it off for everything. Okay. Because really I shouldn't be saving on, it should. It certainly shouldn't be saving with my tools. And then you can go through here and do it with the crossways and then split mass points. And then now you've got your two uh, laces here. Easy enough, as opposed to doing the whole rebuild process like we did. Um, cool. So let's say we have, we got these two. Let's go ahead and delete those. And let's look for some more low-hanging fruit like we are talking about. Um, shoes are done-ish. Uh, we do have a bird skull and like little bird thing. So let's, let's, let's knock that out real quick. I think it's a bird skull or it could be a, uh, like a rodent skull. I guess that's a rodent skull, isn't it? Wouldn't be a turtle skull, would it? That might even be even better. Let me see what those look like. That'd be kind of morbid, though, for a kid's shoe. Um, trying to find a... Uh, ideally, there would be, like, you know, a front, the side, three-quarter, but you can get you can get away with just like a three-quarter shot should be fine. Let me see if that's close enough. Let's go to um, save image as, and we'll go ahead and throw it right onto my desktop here. Go out of edit mode, because we're just going to turn this into a brush anyway, so I don't care about scale or anything like that. Uh, Polymesh 3D, edit mode, texture, import, and we're going to go down here to desktop. Sea turtle texture, grab it, add it. Here's my reference. Knock this down a bit. Oh, that was another cool thing too on the ZBrush Summit 2019 was the ability to dial, because normally what you would have to do is uh, fill your texture with white uh, by a percentage of your RGB intensity, that just to knock it back. Uh, but of course that's super destructive. Um, now that's just a slider, so you can get your texture back. So that's, that's neat. Uh, so we have this here. Let's go ahead, you know what? Let's just grab um, this is sphere. Make polymesh 3D. X going X symmetry. Make sure we're Z forward here. And we'll go ahead and scale this out just a little bit. Scale it up. And we'll go ahead and match this enough. And again, this doesn't have to be super duper crazy. Um, but we can go through here and we can hold that control shift and clip. And then move this back. And we'll turn this into a Dynamesh. I'm going to drop that resolution just a bit. We don't need anything super detailed. And this has a jaw, which we're going to go ahead and disregard. Or if I wasn't going to disregard it. Um, 
I would just do it as a separate soap tool anyway. So go ahead and smooth this down, and let me get my sorry my gotta look down at the reference here. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. So, uh, and if you ever do need to see your reference a little bit better, uh, you can go through here with Z. You can turn it up and turn it down and kind of see uh, what's going on there. And we'll go ahead and smooth this out. So, really quickly, we have the sh overall shape that we're looking for here. You can go through here and you can, you can still see the smiley face on there. You can go in here and H polish. And we have the overall shape that we're looking for. I'm looking at other kinds of reference on that. Google image page that we were messing around with, so just kind of eyeballing this, um, just to get an idea of the overall flatness of it. Some of them are different species, so you know what? I'm not being, I'm not a scientist, so I'm just gonna, I'm not making anything in particular. If I was, um, I would certainly um, have better more more concise reference uh, but we have the overall shape now uh, you can see these things aren't going straight across and that's okay it's not a huge deal we can always go back in here and reclip these just using our clip brush and then we pulled this back and this looks like it goes a little bit thinner up top okay Let's call this a day. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift Z. Now I should have saved. If we go in here to Movie, Timeline, Show. And I probably should turn on Perspective as well while we're capturing this. So we've got the overall shape and I've modified it to kind of match a little bit more. And then I can go back in here and then mush this thing around to correct any weird stuff that I've done. Because when I go through and to the side and I make it like, Oh, the profile was wrong. You got to go back in here. I also turned on perspective, so that's going to modify it a bit. So go back in here and then say, you know what, this goes back out a little bit further. We'll redyne the mesh. Uh, let's go to smooth stronger. And of course, smooth stronger, you guys know about. And I don't like sculpting in uh, with perspective turned on, uh, but for now, it's a necessary evil. Of course, the one thing I forgot was to set that key. So we'll go through here and we'll say, okay, we're going to line up our skull. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to have like a let's turn our perspective here, just a midline right down the middle as an indicator. And you could paint this on, but I'm just going to sculpt it on real quick as where exactly that midline is. That's a little bit easier to match up the rotations and stuff. So we'll say this is close. I'm going to hit put a little key in here. Um, now I don't need to have that showing anymore. It'll still be there. So we'll go back in here to timeline, uh, movie timeline, show off. And then uh, now I can move this thing around and use my arrow keys to get it back. So here, and that's just back and forth arrow. What is that? Forward and back. Um, comma and period on your keyboard. So here, looks like there's got a little teeth back there. Match this up. And pull that back just a bit. Um, this will give me an indication of where that eye socket needs to go, but it's kind of hard to see on this side exactly where it needs to go, but that's generally where that socket needs to be. Um, however, we can also go through here and we can turn on our, we've got our standard brush here, let's turn on RGB and it's at 100%. So now we can just paint where those features are. And we can use this to kind of indicate where stuff needs to go. Uh, again, there's a new slider in 20, uh, coming out from ZBrush Summit, hopefully, that uh, we can use. But in this case, I'm gonna have to go to RGB, drop that intensity down, white selected color, fill object, and just knock that back just a bit. But now we have indications of where these details need to go. And then we can go through here. Is that nose pushback? Yeah. So pushback noses, we can just mask and invert. Let's push that way back. And then same thing for the eye sockets here. We can mask where that is. And then control tap, invert that. And if you want to put in an edge ring, you can. Um, in this case, not so nice. Uh, but what you could do, if you needed to make it a little bit nicer, is we can do a geometry edge loop mask border. And then I'll give you a little bit of a nicer transition. And then when you control tap this one and control drag it in, it should give you a little bit smoother. Uh, not that we need it in this particular instance, but it, I don't know, might be worthwhile to you. You can also do. Uh, actually, it might have been nicer. Let's do it. Let's do it twice, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Just save us a little bit of time. So this one here, we're going to say edge loop mask border, W, control tap, 
and then control drag this in. And then we're gonna take this inside one here, do control shift X to expand, get rid of this one, hit control W. So we're gonna just get some polygroups going. And then here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Yoink. And then control alt tap to clean this mask up a little bit and then do another edge loop mask border. Oops, looks like we unmask and then mask and then edge loop mask border. Control alt tap to clean up that mask a little bit. Is it doing something weird? Okay, it kept it. Um, so we have this here, and now we can hit W, control tap this, control drag to add an edge ring in it. And if you wanted to, you could like scale this in or move it around or whatever you need to do. Make sure you turn on LSIM if you want to do a local scale here. So you can do this type of thing. Uh, and then again, control shift, control shift X to expand, get control shift tap, control W. So now we have these. The whole reason I'm doing this is because if I wanted to go through and just have a, a shell thickness here. That'll just save me a little bit of time because I can just take this here and I'm already uh, mostly done. So we can go ahead, if we want to, we can turn off line. And now we can go ahead and, like I was saying, looks like this back of the skull here. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing all this stuff in here I don't want. Um, we can use, oh, I don't have it on here. Um, you can go in here to depth, um, hold on control, and then you can uh, add a depth mask, and I think if you pull this one up, not quite to zero, but close, that'll kind of stop you from hitting, going over those harder edges here maybe. You can do concave and convex. Uh, you can also just turn your camera and turn on auto masking, back face. Remember, holding down control, and that'll stop your brush from going beyond the limits that you're trying to set. Control Alt Tap to clean that up. I'll go ahead and turn that off and turn off depth mask, or just drag it back out. Um, so we got this here. So why am I doing all this? Because the skull itself. Now, if I was going to do like a game res version of this, and it's just going to be a tiny, insignificant part of uh, the overall thing, I would just leave it solid, and just so it's easier to game res and bake maps, and you don't have a bunch of crazy polys sitting there. Uh, but if you want to do something a little more realistic, you can go in here. We'll do edge loop. Like say you're doing this for like a. Um, oops. Let's go to delete hidden edge loop mask border. Isolate this one. Delete hidden. So now we have. Um, just this overall thickness. Now this here, we're just gonna end up dynameshing. So you could Z remesh this and start nice and fresh and do um, Z modeler and bring it in. Uh, alternatively, you can also go down here if you just want something quick. I go in here and do extract, always okay. And that'll go ahead and just give you thickness forward and back. And in this case, it's fine. So we'll go ahead and accept that. And then uh, we don't need this original anymore. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And then now you have just an extraction of that skull knock this back and then uh, make sure you have X symmetry turned on and you can go through here, turn on perspective again, go ahead and reset this camera a bit. If you do need to reset, just make sure you go into timeline show. You can drag this key off, reset a new key, and now go through here and you can move this stuff around. Now, of course, you can just redynamesh this as needed. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Go ahead and turn off line. Let's see a little bit better. I hate when I open up these menus accidentally. There we go. So this might be a little bit easier for you to start out with as far as like making a realistic skull. Um, and then you can go back and um, add all the interior stuff as needed. So I'll leave that up to you. But uh, anyway, so we have this here. Let's just turn off Shift Z so I can see a little bit better. Uh, yeah, because there's there's obviously some sinuses in here, and these noses go way back. So I can actually hit W, Control Tap this purple. Let's go out of X symmetry by tapping X Alt, uh, or go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and now I can just pull in this thickness just a bit. We'll just pull in along here, like so. And then if I wanted to just add, you know, this can all be Dynamesh, but if I wanted to add a um, kind of a strip down the middle. It looks like there's like something. 
Why am I itchy all of a sudden? It is ragweed season in Austin, so make sure you plan accordingly to anybody who's susceptible to that. So here, and then it kind of looks like in here, we can say bevel edge loop complete. Let's bevel this out, and it looks like this, this side goes up, so let's say Q mesh. And uh, oh, it's going to want to connect, so let's not do a Q mesh, let's do an extrude. Let's pull this up. So now we've got this, and then it also looks like maybe back here, let's do another insert. And again, I'm just very vaguely, sorry all the turtle skull experts out there. Um, it, we didn't have X-symmetry turned on, I guess we turned it off, but we can mirror it real quick. Um, so something like this looks like the internal structure of the skull just a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and undo, or um, unmask all this. Although, no, hold on. Also through here. Insert single edge loop. And then maybe over here. These are also pulled out. So now um, this one, I can just go into my move brush. Kind of move these back. Yeah, something like that. And I just do a quick mirror and weld, and then you can just go ahead and just DynaMesh this resolution, knock that back down again. Bam. Go in here and smooth that as needed. Hit X to go across X symmetry. And this is vaguely what we're looking at here. And again, I, I err on the side of kind of too low of a DynaMesh when I'm just figuring forms out, but then of course once you start adding detail, um, you know, feel free. So, put this back, turn on perspective again. Um, and again, you can use, you can sculpt through um, projection, your Z projection, as long as you do have brush. And this is on by default, so I wouldn't worry too much about this, but spotlight projection is turned on. Um, if you want to have spotlight off to the side and you want to sculpt, then turn that off, and that'll allow you to, that functionality. Uh, so there we go. Match that profile just a little bit more. Uh, the teeth I'll just leave out as well. I don't know, man. That's pretty close. Like I, like I say, close enough for government work. And then you can go through here and you can just start refining. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off. Uh, we don't need a polypaint on there anymore. So let's go through here and just start refining the shape just a bit. Uh, looks like it does get a little bit thinner on the inside. So there's kind of a... And also these are obviously not super organic, so I'd go through here and maybe, if you can find good reference, great, use it. Um, but another thing we can do is that we did just kind of do it a, just an extrude. You might be thinking, well, now nah, do I need a Z remesh this in order to get lower res geometry to get these a little bit better? Uh, certainly you can, but usually what I'll do is go through here and just use like a trim dynamic and then a pinch to kind of go through here and just modify the outer thicknesses here like so. And then same thing for the inside of the eyeballs here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit less uh, crazy. And if you, there is, I guess there is some filler. You know, and getting this kind of detail, again, if I'm just going to put something on a necklace and it's only going to be seen from here, uh, pick and choose your battles. Don't, don't do this. Um, this is just for fun showing off, like demonstrating techniques and all that good stuff. But, you know, be smart about what you're making and what, how it's going to be viewed um, more than anything. So let's go through here. We'll take our standard brush. Let's turn off RGB. Turn on Z-Ad. Crank that up a little bit. Uh, lazy radius under your stroke menu up a little bit. And then I usually just turn that off. If I need it, it's there. Um, and then clay brush here. RGB for clay brush doesn't need to be on. And then we can go through here. And this will be, I don't know, I guess kind of the soft palette or the hard palette. I don't know. I don't know turtle anatomy. I barely know human anatomy, especially not the physiology part. Uh, now, if you are going to be sculpting on thin meshes, um, you are going to want to make sure you're not doing this kind of type of thing. So make sure you go into back face masking and you go ahead and turn that on. Uh, anyway, so we got this here and then we'll go again, go through here with trim dynamic and then back here, maybe a little trim dynamic on the inside of the eyeballs here and just kind of thin this up. Because again, it may, there may be thickness in there. That's not necessarily incorrect. Uh, what you're trying to do is thin out that transition. And then you can go back through here with your pinch brush. And you can pinch this up a little bit. Now we are running out of resolution here. I'm going to raise that up just a bit. Let's go back up to 128. That's the default Z primitive that we're working at. 
Yeah, it seems like this nose goes back. You can um, connect. No, there's a hole in there, man. Turtle skulls are weird. Um, so we can go through here and maybe trim this back just a bit. Uh, if you need to see a little bit better, you can just... Um... Oh, so we have clip turned on. If we don't need clip, we just need um, view visibility selection, select rect. Uh, tap control, and then I'll toggle before, back and forth, or just hold down control shift and go up here and switch it out, like so. Um, oh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, any environment artist streamers at certain affinity? I saw one or two take talking in Zebra Summit chat the other day, but I don't believe they stream. Um, yeah, I don't think they stream either. Uh, Dave and Sierra. So if you go to my, uh, I'm trying to think of ZBrush environment users a lot of the environment stuff if it's like modular or it's um a lot of it there's like the gears of war environment stuff where you just go nuts on a single asset and then you figure out how to propagate that throughout your uh, scene a lot of it is also and that's kind of like high res to low res there's also usually what ends up happening is a lot of low res to high res on the environment side because you have to be so optimized and have so many tricks up your sleeve um Although no, we do we do some we we are doing some weird stuff. So we do have. It seems like the weirder it gets, the more you're inclined to just use ZBrush for your source art. But anyway, uh, let's go to my profile. Um, ZBrush Summit 2018. So last year when I was at ZBrush Summit, you can go through here. Here's the tutorial series that I I'll link you guys to this. Uh, the tutorial series that I made for that. It's 96 videos. Um, because here's my ZBrush Summit presentation. Whereas at ZBrush, it's about an hour and change. Yeah, about an hour and 12 minutes. Um, so you get to see me on stage uh, with a little screen behind me talking about stuff, but I don't really get to cover a lot of things because mostly it's just me talking. Um, but this tutorial series is when I came home and we just kind of went over some stuff. And then down here, this is the cinematic that we made using ZBrush and Unreal. Uh, and well, you know, as far as like what was modeled and stuff, actually, let me see if I can go a little bit bigger because I can talk a little bit about, I can't go full screen because uh, my my actual full screen is way bigger than what's being captured, um, but through here, um, this is all done by uh, Dave Ansira and J, uh, J um, JP Eaton. So if you scroll down, read more, you're gonna see. Here's Christian Gallego. He did the texturing for most of the like I did the preliminary texturing on uh, her equipment and the drone, uh, the mech thing. Uh, he did the final, and then he he did more of the work. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more of a drag and drop. Um, not very good. I'm not a real good texture artist, so I just do preliminary stuff. But uh, it's not an excuse. You should be good at texturing. But uh, John Paul Eaton, he kind of directed the whole thing, and then also did a lot of environment work. And then Dave Ansira did a lot of the most of the environment work and the the thing at the very end. And uh, well, thank you. And then uh, Tony Reynolds did the base body and the skin shader and the hair and stuff. So we talked a little bit about those techniques. Um, so here she's walking through. And then I'm trying to think. So here on the drone, so the little clamps here, these were all modeled in ZBrush and then textured in Substance Painter. And then all of him, all of his little skeleton body and stuff. So here's his like underbody. Um, this is all just every bit of this. And it's in fact, this entire drone model with the armor plating was like 16 megabytes because he's super, He's, there's, it seems like there's a lot going on, but in reality, there's there's really not. I can actually load this up. Um, but yeah, this is all modeled and textured. And then th these weapons here, um, those are just concept models. Those are like super crappy, like um, just, I mean, not crappy. I mean, they're fine. It's just uh, blocked in in ZBrush uh, and then run through Painter real quick. It's just a proxy model. Um, this is all modeled in ZBrush. Uh, I modeled all this. Um, Trying to figure out, yeah, all this stuff. This is all ZBrush modeled, textured in Painter. And then, yeah, so all, and again, I can open up this file too, but there's really not as much going on there as you would think. And you can save so much stuff in post with lighting and materials. You almost don't need to model at all. And then her equipment and stuff like that. And then this, this uh, I modeled this and this little NES cartridge is kind of integrated into his back here. Um, bam. 
and then all of the environment and terrain and uh, there's like some world machine stuff going on in here out here I'm sure but this is all Dave Ansira um, maybe the effects guys did some of the smoke and particles yeah actually yeah the effects guys did do a lot of that stuff and even even obviously when he kind of short circuits out all of this stuff the effects guy is going nuts turning on the lights and stuff um, so yeah really cool stuff all the different departments um, makes for some makes for good stuff here let me load that up real quick so you can see let me see keep this off of my screen here nope um, what am I looking for here ah there we go so if we're looking at the files here uh, you're going to see the one with the start groups and all the booleans and stuff it's 16 megabytes um, and it's the whole thing it's everything you saw there uh, just super duper optimized uh, a lot of array mesh a lot of nano mesh a lot of um, dynamic subdivisions uh, speaking of it's probably going to chug a little bit because dynamic subdivisions turned on so while it is a super low res mesh um, it is dynamically subdividing to a much higher resolution so going to edit mode here and in fact it might be easier to look at so here's here's that drone here I'm going to do a sub tool merge visible and this is going to kill some of the array mesh functionality but here you can see um, you know fairly low res so if we go back now this stuff back here isn't quite as optimized because I was just decimating stuff down at a certain point uh, but you can see like the little NES cartridge and here this is just um, basic I mean this this stuff could be Z modeler in but I think I just used ended up using boolean meshes a little bit of Z model a little bit of Z um, little boolean this looks more like CAD data honestly and then I mean it wasn't CAD data but it just reminds me of some CAD data and then here's the um, little NES back and it's even got of course you know be smart about what you're modeling I don't even think this showed up but there is uh, these little NES uh, ports through here for the controllers uh, are all in here and all the wires this is all fairly accurate to what goes on in the guts uh, of an NES and even the little plastic molding and stuff on the inside um, is fairly accurate this uh, we moved the power buttons and stuff around but that's that's pretty much what was there uh, there is a chassis in here and then underneath yeah, all this armor plating and stuff once you peel this back um, you can see a little bit more of the underworkings in here so you can see he's got his little motherboard little brick in here and then that gets fed through the wiring and then that wiring goes and controls all this other stuff so um, and then this is just an IMM brush here yeah little um, this would be a helix primitive mostly just primitives there's not a whole lot of there's not a lot of stuff going on this is probably the hardest thing to make right here <laughs> as far as just actually making something in particular um, let's see uh, I think Solomon Blair is the one with the current lineup occasionally streams some environment work yes Solomon's another good one uh, Steven Anderson mixing with characters um yeah, and you uh interested in environments streamer realize heavy on Zebra Moto. I don't know if it's allowed here to mention the streamers in here. Yeah, go for it. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> um Yeah, Gears of War art dumps. If you want to see like just taking uh, an asset to the max in ZBrush for an environment, it's pretty good. cool uh nizumi how's it going uh yeah so the mech was completely done this is 100 percent done in zbrush pretty much anything i worked on in that cinematic which we just talked about uh was all done in zbrush yeah i can't think of anything that wasn't um even the hair on the girl was done in zbrush that was tony reynolds work um but yeah so and yeah this gun all done in ZBrush. Yeah, so this gun actually goes back. Ooh, man, there's like an engine in here. Um, a little, another little engine block and a little uh, cooling, little cooling vents in here. 
Let me see if I can grab these pieces out here. This is the merged one, so it's a little bit difficult to see. Uh, but there's there's a lot of cool stuff. There's like little springs in here, little uh, dampeners through here that kind of little shock absorbers. Um, but it's 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 kind of cobbled together. And then here's a little cage. This roll cage was made, uh, which is with Z spheres. And then um, going through and cleaning this up a little bit. So yeah, little flips and switches. Uh, these things were from an insert mesh brush. I might even have these be. You see brush, hard surface, um, electrical components, tubes and wires, weapon components, tubes. Um, boy, it's been a while since I've been in here. Uh, yeah, when I'm doing this stuff a lot, I kind of remember where things are, and then I go in here and I'm oh, bolts, knobs, switches. This will work. And then if I go in here, there's some stuff that's just cobbled together from sources that I've bought off Gumroad and stuff, but these ones in particular I just modeled in ZBrush, so these little switches here. You have just the switches, and then you have um, switches with a little casing, so we can switch it to here. And then if I wanted switches with a little casing, you can just drag and drop that on there. I'm going to go ahead and split mass points, going to solo. And then you can see uh, we get D for dynamic, increase level of 3, smooth it to 4. Oops. You can see you can, and it's still broken up, so you can go in here and you can assign like metal to this. And this is probably a little bit overkill, but it has that little spinny knob in here. It has a little screw for this one here. Um, this little thing, these little things. There, I, I left, oh, no, there's a little spring in there too. <laughs> I was going to say, I left the spring out, but no, there is a spring in there. So again, a massive overkill on something that's probably going to be seen like from here. But if you are working on a, like a first person uh, weapon, and actually now that I mentioned that, um, I wonder if I have my, oh good. So these are the concept proxy weapons. These are uh, just really rough um, just go in here, Dynamesh, Clip Brush, Alpha Brush, Z Modeler, just to kind of get stuff built in. So you can see here's the little flip switches. You know, so if it is going to be an F first person weapon that's right up next to the screen, um, there's nothing wrong with maybe doing a little bit more overkill. Uh, same thing for back here, it's going to be right in the middle of the um, view. Uh, but yeah, these are all just concept models. And then I uh, proxied out thrown into Maya for some quick animation functionality and then just kind of refine from there and then you run them through Substance Painter real quick and you get them in game. Uh, this is from, let me close this down. Hold on just a second here. Oh, I'm right here. Uh, this is from, if you go into ZBrush, Oh boy, it's an older one. Uh, Zebras 4 8 what's new? We talked a little bit about it with Booleans, but then the sci-fi weapon process will walk you through kind of the making of this weapon start to start to finish, I think, or just different techniques to kind of get you there. Um, and I threw it into the game because I had it available to me and they needed a, a handgun. Uh, same thing with this one. This is a little medic. So this little thing flicks open and pops out and then this thing shoots out. Um, but yeah, it's all in the video. Cool. Um, streamer called Dynasty. He's worked on Division One, for example. Cool. And I, honestly, I, I probably should do more environment work. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I like doing it. It's just um, I gotta pick and choose my battles. Let's go ahead and delete all here. So let's go ahead and finish this out real quick. Uh, so we've got a skull going on. Let me. Here's my reference real quick. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this stuff and going through here. And again, if you're sculpting on thin things, uh, oh, this is a good example. So well, see how it's kind of capping out here? So we talked about this earlier. You can go into your draw uh, preferences and change those around. Also, I might just unify this, uh, deformation unify, just to kind of get it back down to a ZBrush primitive size. Again, because I don't really care about the scale that much. Uh, also, I guess we don't need to look at this anymore. So movie, timeline, turn off show. And it looks like over here, there's like a ridge down the side. You can hold down, um, you can do Damien Standard and then kind of go through here, or Damn Standard if you're just reading the brushes out loud. So then go through here and then sculpt this up. And then this is kind of like a ridge. So in this, this case, I might just grab a mask of this and just pull this out just a bit. And again, if you're just doing 
um, sculpting, or you can just do a, an inflate uh, just a bit. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Um, this kind of goes out. It's kind of hard to, ooh, yeah, that kind of curves in a little bit. Kind of goes through here and then just kind of gets rid of all this stuff. So this this is where I might go in here to smooth stronger, turn on Sculptures Pro, and just go in here and obliterate all this stuff. And then maybe go in here with my Trim Dynamic. So I use, I use Sculptures Pro to obliterate, and I'll turn it off. And I'll go in here with my H Polish and Trim Dynamic and kind of clean this up, or my Clay Brush, hold down Alt, and kind of get these shapes back, and then Trim Brush, like so. Here and then this kind of this kind of pulls out, and then this kind of pulls out, and then go back into your clay brush. And uh, if you wanted, if you were doing like a hard surface sculpt, like if you wanted to do like an armor-plated turtle skull, that's where I go in here with my H polish. Or if you just want to kind of define your planes of your forms a little bit more, uh, just going in here with your H polish brush and overcranking that just a bit. Go through here and you can hold down Alt and let go of Alt. You can start refining this just a bit. Finding those angles and all that good stuff. And you pop this out and go in here with your standard brush. Oops. Let's crank that. Let's, you're losing some resolution here. Here, and then this kind of goes just kind of straight back. So I'm going to fudge this a little bit. We're going to move this back and then go in here with your clay brush. You have back face masking on. So I need to worry about going through the mesh. And then again, just trim dynamic. So I think we've got our forms working well enough. You can go through here and you can pinch out, pinch the thinner edges if you need to. But I think we're OK. I think we're in good shape. And then this kind of goes back. Now this actually does look like it gets a little bit thicker through here. There's a big uh, section in here. So if you hold down control, go in here, turn on back face masking so you don't go through the object, and then control tap W, let's pull this out, and then we'll go ahead and reposition this. We'll thin it out just a bit. Looks like it kind of does something like this. It actually looks like it kind of does this. Sorry, it's hard to see. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at something, but you guys can't see it, but you can kind of see how that kind of goes in and then forward. That's all I'm looking at. Clay brush here, and then trim dynamic, redyne the mesh. Now we're working at a fairly high resolution. So if we did, if you did want to do like, okay, this is, I want to go and start sculpting detail. I want to put UVs uh, through this object. We do have symmetry turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this off. Um, we can 